This is Radio Nepal. I'm Kaushal Ghimide with the news. The headlines first. Ruling Alliance meeting today to discuss the post-election scenario. CPN Maui Center decides to discuss the formation of the new government within the ruling coalition. 14 people die in flash floods in South Africa. And France and England make it to the quarterfinals of the FIFA World Cup 2022. Now the news in detail. The ruling coalition's meeting is going to convene today to discuss post-election situation in the country. Talking to media persons following the CPN Maui Center office bearers meeting yesterday, Party General Secretary De Prasad Gurung shared that the ruling coalition's meeting was called to review the November 20th parliamentary elections. Nepali Congress secured 57 seats in the recently held election, while CPN Maui Center won 17 seats as per the first-past-the-post system of the House of Representatives. Similarly, CPN Unified Socialist got 10 seats, while Loktantrik Samazbadi Party got 4 seats and Rashtriya Jana Morcha got 1 seat. Meanwhile, a meeting of the central office bearers of CPN Maui Center held yesterday decided to discuss the formation of the new government among the current coalition partners. The party has been reviewing the election results at the party's central office in Peristana. General Secretary of the party, Dev Gurung, said they accepted the election results and decided to lead discussions among the coalition partners for government formation. General Secretary Gurung said the next move would be taken after discussion among the current coalition partners. The vote count results of 164 constituencies under the first past the post system of the 165 House of Representatives constituencies have been declared so far. Now the vote count results of Dorka Federal Constituency and Dolka Province Assemblies constituency number one are awaited. As per the latest update, CPN Maui Center candidate Ganga Karki has taken lead in the vote count tally in Dolka once again with 33,707 votes. His nearest contender, Balkrishna Siwakoti of CPN UML, has received 33,593 votes. There is a very tough competition going on in Dolka. Nepali Congress's candidate Badri Prasad Pandey has been elected as a member of the House of Representatives from Bajra. Leader Pandey received 31,786 votes, while his nearest contender Karnabahadu Thapa of the CPN UML got 26,349 votes. From the first past the post system to the proportional representation system. The Election Commission has counted 10,420,125 votes so far under the proportional category of the House of Representatives. As per the updates unveiled by the Election Commission, the CPN UML has been leading the vote count tally in the proportional category with 2,788,000 356 votes. The Nepali Congress is in the second position with 2,666,246 votes. Likewise, the CPN Maui Center is in the third position and the Rashtriya Sotantra Party is in the fourth position. The Nepali Congress has directed its district and province committees to investigate the complaints lodged against those who betrayed in the election to defeat candidates of the party and the ruling alliance. Secretary at the Nepal Congress, Nepali Congress Party Office, Prem Casey, said the list of those who did not cooperate and betrayed the party and alliance candidates should be prepared and sent to the center for necessary action. Home Minister Balkrishna Khan has said the government would do its best to assist in increasing the morale of security personnel. Speaking at an event organized in Singadarbar yesterday, Home Minister Khan praised the police for fulfilling their duty to provide security and control crime. On the occasion, the Home Minister also inspected the police barracks at Singadarbar. He directed the entire entire police to provide security and curb crimes with the optimum use of technologies. 
Minister for Health and Population Bhawani Prasad Khapung has stressed collective efforts among the bodies concerned to eliminate violence against women. Addressing a program on combating violence against women in Kathmandu yesterday, the health minister said the One Door Crisis Management Center under the sub subordination of the health ministry had been providing assistance to the violent survivors through 94 facilities 11046 people are said to have been provided medical facilities from the one door crisis management center last year and the majority of them were the survivors of the domestic violence the data mentions that most of the cases of violence were from the family members and relatives The secretary at the Ministry of Communication and Information Technology Dr. Baikuntha Aryal has urged the employees of Radio Nepal to properly utilize the opportunity of its 92% coverage of the country's population with its services. Dr. Aryal who is also chairman of the board of directors at a radio broadcasting service Development Committee Radio Nepal said so while inaugurating an induction program for the newly recruited permanent employees of Radio Nepal saying Radio Nepal has both opportunities and challenges secretary Dr Aryal emphasized on involving the new employees in the competitive market with a high morale he said Radio Nepal being an archive of past songs music news and programs should bridge the citizens and the state autonomously on the occasion Radio Nepal's executive director Buddhi Badur Kesi urged the newly recruited employees to hone their skills and implement them for the institution's interest you're listening to Radio Nepal's ATM English News Bulletin on to some international updates now 14 people have died in South Africa after a flash flood in a river swept away worshippers worshippers taking part in a church ceremony according to the eyewitnesses more than 30 congregants were standing on the rocks in the river on Saturday when a torrent of water surged through the pastor was saved after he clung on to an overhanging tree branch as he was being carried away the witness said Rescuers have now suspended the search of the Johannesburg's Jukske River. There are still thought to be at least 3 people unaccounted for. Indonesia's Mount Semeru volcano has erupted, sending ash billowing into the sky and sparking evacuations on the country's main island Java. Authorities raised the volcano's warning status to the highest level, meaning its activity had escalated. According to the BBC, no injuries have been reported, but nearly 2000 people were evacuated from the area around the volcano. Now football FIFA France and England have made it to the quarterfinals in the FIFA World Cup 2022 underway in Qatar in the first first match played yesterday France defeated Poland 3-1 Kylian Mbappe scored two goals and Olivier Giroud won for France meanwhile Robert Lewandowski scored via a penalty for Poland to make the final score line 3-1 In the match played at the All Bait Stadium of Qatar, Nepali time this morning in the second round of 16 match, England defeated Senegal 3-0 to reach the group of 8 that is the quarter finals. Jordan Henderson scored the first goal for for England in the 38th minute of the game. Likewise, Harry Kane doubled England's lead in the first half stoppage time. Later in the 57th minute of the game, Bukayo Saka netted third goal to make The final score line 3-0. England will now take on France in the quarter finals. Now the general weather forecast for the country for today according to the meteorological forecasting division. The weather will be partly cloudy in province number 1, Gandaki province and Lumbini province and mainly fair in the rest of the country. Kathmandu's weather report for the past 24 hours, the maximum temperature was 20.6 degrees Celsius and the minimum temperature was 7 degrees Celsius. Well, that's all the news we have for this bulletin, but before wrapping up the headlines once again.
ruling alliance meeting today to discuss the post-election scenario. CPN Maui Center decides to discuss the formation of the new government within the ruling coalition. Fourteen people die in flash floods in South Africa and France and England make it to the quarterfinals of the FIFA World Cup 2022. Well, that's all the news we have for this bulletin. Our next bulletin in English will be at 2 in the afternoon. You can also listen to us online at our website, www.onlineradionepal.gov.np. Keep listening to Radio Nepal and have a good day.